Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Everyday Night. I'm Joe. And I'm Jeff. We're back from a long hiatus. Yes, we are. I, I served my kingdom as sovereign. Yeah, congratulations. Um, and Thank you. Glad it's over. <laughs> <laughs> And um, so, so, and what, pray tell, are you drinking tonight to commemorate the end of your reign and the beginning of uh, the next chapter of the Everyday Night? Well, uh, our during the reign, our cabinet was rather ransacked. <laughs> um, and so I've got uh, a, a, a gifted bottle of Four Roses small batch that I always have always liked. So that's just straight up on the rocks and mm -hmm. good sipping bourbon. And you, sir. Um, so I have a perfect Manhattan, um, which uses... Um, half ounce of dry vermouth half ounce of sweet vermouth and two ounces of bourbon mm -hmm. uh, and then it's often dry and often dressed with a twist or a, a brandied um cherry but i tend to lose the fruit on this um i also rather than angostura bitters i like orange bitters in this oh, okay and this is um the bourbon is copper craft from holland michigan which was a birthday present to oh, me. Happy so, birthday. Thank you. In May, right? It was it not? May. Beginning of May. Beginning of May. Oh. Cheers. Cheers. So our topic tonight, what is our topic tonight? Um, our topic tonight is the proper way to make a perfect Manhattan. No, it's not. No, it's not. We just, you, you, we could do that some other time. Okay. <laughs> We did do it. We already done our drinking episode. Okay. So the topic tonight is a discussion of the nine worthies. The nine worthies were um, an early 14th century conception of the uh, men of who were ideals of chivalry. I think this every I think every medievalist ought to be familiar with the nine worthies. Um, but I, I found that it, it I think it, it can coalesced and was codified a little more in the 14th century with the Jean de Longuillon. Yes. But but there are um, representations of, of these nine that go back to the third hundred years at least a hundred years previous. Yes. Um, I actually have a couple of I have I have a couple of photos if oh yeah okay um let me see this is not something I'm good at let me get the file first oh and this is a let's see how this works so share screen well, I've got one here. This is a uh, four. Oh, you, got, you get the relief. Yeah, fourteenth-century carving of the nine good heroes, and one of the earliest representations of the nine worthies. And that's the thirteenth-century one. That's from the uh, city hall in Cologne. Yeah, it's fourteen. They, I, I think it's fourteenth-century, but oh, could be well given the those archways. You're probably right. Um, I've got a mural that's pretty low res image, but if you can okay. see that one. Yep. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, this is, this is representative of the, I'm going to close it now. How do I stop sharing? Stop share. Yep, there you go. Um, that is representative of the nine worthies, and let's just name them off first. Um, 
they're divided into, as we were speaking before we started, they're divided into three subcategories. Yes. The um, good Christians, the best Christians, the best pagans, and better Jews. <laughs> More, more usually, it's ordered the the pagans first because they are the more ancient. The um, and the, and the pagans they these are classical figures for the most part. Hector of Troy, Alexander the Great, and Julius Caesar. Yes, um, <clears throat> Hector, who was killed by um, Achilles. Yep. Um, in the movie, played by oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> played by Brad Pitt. <laughs> in the the account of it is that um, Achilles, having killed him, then um, tied his body to the back of his chariot and dragged him around the city, which was um, considered really dishonorable and. Yeah. Uh, the uh, gods did not look favorably on that. Um, Achilles really wasn't a good guy. No. He was a heel. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so, and, and Hector, of course, then is lauded for his, his, and he knew that Achilles was a great hero yeah. and nearly invincible, mm -hmm. but faced him on behalf of his city. Yeah. In single combat and so that is sort of where his worth derives from his sacrifice yes um uh. <clears throat> alexander the great uh, alexander of macedon macedon yes um who conquered much of the uh, known world at the time um, but and yes known mostly as a conqueror but also known for establishing the library in alexandria Yes. So he, he does contribute more than just conquest to his legacy. Um, and Julius Caesar, who, who uh, was the head of the Republic of Rome, essentially, but um, was accused of becoming a dictator, which is ironic because after he was killed, Rome became an empire and it became a dictatorship. Yeah. Um, so those are the three. And, and Julius Caesar is also credited by, or was credited by many during the medieval period as sort of the father of Western civilization. I mean, he was the, the sort of a, the singular individual who was the beacon for, uh, uh, what what people at the time thought was great about you know western civilization such as it was which is really interesting because they also at the time referred to aristotle um yet he's not credited and that's an issue in the in the who they chose for the nine worthies that's something i think that we can talk about um and but Caesar also made a great salad. So, <laughs> um, and then the three Jews who were better, <laughs> um, uh, the King David, um, who was who obviously was um, known for his being the, the king and although well military prowess yeah he had them. foibles too um well. solomon is the one who's thought of as being wise but um they picked king uh they picked david and joshua who's known as a military leader um and one of my favorites um judah maccabee um, Maccabee, not a given name, but and, and means the hammer there, due to the right. hammer. Um, although there are several different thoughts about how, what the origin of that name is. 
um, <clears throat> and known for, I, 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 I mean, the Hanukkah story is that he led his people and they took, they threw out the, the conquerors and took back the temple and then the whole eight days. Um, and so I always liked that, that story myself. Um, it's also in, in case anybody didn't get this, the, um, uh, very funny movie, um, the Hebrew hammer, which was, uh, yeah. <laughs> of a um, like a Jewish version of Shaft in in some ways the baddest he yeah. the baddest he this side of Tel Aviv yeah <laughs> Shabbat Shalom motherfuckers Motherfucker. yeah. <laughs> he was called the Hebrew Hammer because of Judah Maccabee Judah the Hammer and because the plot is him saving Hanukkah so it was it's a joke that. Um, it's a kind of an in-joke, but I think it's pretty funny. Um, so those are the the, the better Jews. Um, <clears throat> and then there are the Christians. Right. So Charlemagne, again. Right. You know, conqueror. Conquered, conqueror. Well, you could, in some ways, Charlemagne started out as did Arthur, as a uniter. Yes. He, I mean, he, he brought France and Frankish land under one rule and had a long period of peace. Yeah, and then kept going. Well, uh, exactly. Well, yeah. Well, what do you do with yeah. all of the, the, the huge army you've just amassed to, to settle your kingdom? What do you do with them now? Well, isn't that why why courtly love came into being to civilize knights when they weren't at war? Indeed. So, um, but Charlemagne didn't have Eleanor of Aquitaine, so. Um, and Arthur, King Arthur, of course, is legendary, based possibly on a combination of a sixth and ninth century sixth and ninth century leaders um but his <clears throat> the idea of arthur is really what they're talking about because holy grail and yeah <laughs> you know much much of chivalric tradition centers around arthur and the round right. table and all that um and the stories lots of stories about war, uh, warrior lore got yeah. concentrated around Arthur and lots of old pre-Christian stories like like a lot of things a lot of pre-Christian stories were were dragged in and written into Arthur's legend um so yeah so it's no wonder that King Arthur is one of those but I find the third one the most interesting who is a who I I gotta think uh was it was at the back of sponsoring this whole list <laughs> yeah i think i think you're right there and that's always that was one of the questions i had when looking at this the the guy who codified this in the 14th century as you mentioned was he getting paid something <laughs> some <No>. kickback <laughs> and why why godfrey of bullion bu because he invented bullion cube <laughs> <laughs> how, how did she make broth before this guy came along <laughs> <laughs> um <clears throat> um i and yeah he was uh you know the chivalric knight but wow there are so many others uh in well, that era. i mean why yeah. not william marshall why not um well, in, in fact, later in the 14th century, uh, Bertrand du Guesclin is proposed as a 10th. Yeah, word. I think that makes sense, too. Um, um, not a contemporary of Godfrey, right. Geoffrey de, de Bouillon, but later, but probably accomplished more. Well, Godfrey went to, and recaptured Jerusalem. I think that's his main claim. Okay. 
So again, in service. So, so I think the thing that you've got here is that in the they're all they all have something to do with military or conquering or um and that being held up as an example of what makes them worthy um it reminds me of the he who does most is most most worthy well in this sense it's he who wins the most wins the most is most worthy except in the case of well maybe hector except hector, hector did win a lot until right with um uh, achilles but well, certainly certainly we've discussed this before part of the chivalric you know it's the word i want the the one of the key elements to to chivalric virtue is prowess yes so there it is that's their entry yeah right and i think that that really is the 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 biggest consistent element in the nine worthies i think the dividing them by pagans jews and christians is an interesting and very medieval way to do it it's kind of unusual that they would actually include pagans and jews particularly jews at that time yeah a list of those who are worthy um but they did but dividing it in that way very medieval very interesting thing not how either of us would compose a list of nine worthies now no prob probably not i mean we are the both of us i think are much more secular in our thinking anyway um and i i think that the 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 ethics and we've talked about this before that ethics are humanity ev evolved to be social humans evolved to be social because it was a survival trait you had a greater likelihood of survival in a group and if you were going to exist in the group the group had to evolve ethics would mean rules by which people could interact with each other and right. so ethics are a result of evolution um <clears throat> and so but the ethical ethical standards um i think are consistent with so I, and consistent with my early religious teaching are the ethical standards i have now but there are ethical standards that i think evolved universally in uh, across i won't say universally but across widely across many cultures um, yeah certainly um, this is one of my uh, we're going to get off into these kind of weeds that the the anyone who comes forward and says that all truth is contained in the bible and all of your moral and ethical standards are based on judeo-christian principles and blah blah no every every self-respecting religion has something similar yes has, and long before the bible was written yes and i would have hammurabi the you know Eve, um judeo-christian is not a thing people yeah. see it. it's a christian supersessionist ploy um so just to say i never let that go phrase go okay um, i i was i was quoting yes you were. I agree with you but i yeah so so the yeah so i i i don't buy that the bible contains all truth it's it it has tagged on to some of the other truths that have been true throughout the there history are, of yeah nation. there are so many writings uh in so across the world um that have similarities and right. i think I think that's really fascinating what those similarities across cultures are um <clears throat> well but they get back to that how do you survive as a group right right so it's it doesn't it makes sense that all of them kind of arrive at a similar conclusion that these things are necessary for us to prosper as a community so one thing that one 
later in the 14th century that developed was a female version of the nine worthies, the nine lady worthies or <laughs> worthy ladies um, that attempted to, it wasn't as standardized because it wasn't first and there were different versions of it, but they tried to organize it along similar lines. Right. Um, and um, Lucretia, wife of Brutus, um, who committed suicide after being raped by Tarquinius, at which prompted the overthrow of the Roman monarchy in 510. Right. And I, I think we see it. There, there's a kind of a recurring theme in a lot of these that there's that, although many were, many also were not not the the person to lead change mm -hmm. but to be a catalyst for change by their death or or hor horrific circumstance yeah. brought about some kind of change and in that case um committing suicide um uh or dying leading to a change right a revolution or a or something which I mean could go to sacrifice, I suppose, like Hector. Yes, but it 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 tends to make it's an interesting observation about how men were viewed as heroic versus how women were viewed as heroic. Her heroinic. Uh, I think I think heroin heroic works in either case. I agree. Um, so um there in fact we modernly we would we'd probably be asked to ungender the word hero anyway well heroic i think or yeah, but i mean no heroin hero the word heroin shouldn't no, I, I i agree um i, I don't have, know that i agree i'm just saying that that's that's a trend well, I, I, <laughs> yeah there's um i have um lately been been in writing using the word actor no matter what the person's gender mm -hmm. that's that's become fairly common yes av any of those like aviator and, yeah. and aviatrix that that's being discarded yeah um uh, my brilliant and accomplished wife the architect when she was beginning her career one company said we don't know what to call you should we call you an architectrix? What? <laughs> it just seems so ludicrous to me in, in it, some ways. It does now. Yeah, it it did then. It seemed ludicrous to her too. But um, <laughs> so, yes, let's do away with that. Um, okay. So there were others. Um, Vitra, right. the mother of Coriolanus. There's a joke in there somewhere. <laughs> Coriolanus, your your Uranus and Coriolanus and <laughs> Well, the Coriolis effect. Right. Yeah, okay. I knew there's a joke. I didn't think it was a good one. But no, I, I should point out. <laughs> it's not so you know, it's not a good joke. I avoided it. So Okay. Um, That's this one. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um <clears throat> So in Esther, um, Judith, um, Yale, in the in the, um, the Torah stories of, um, I think Yale, who I did, they don't say Deborah, who in this list who actually led an army to victory. They say Yale, who then killed the chief of who was defeated when he hid in her tent by driving a tent spike through his head. Um, Badass. Yeah. <laughs> um, Judith killed Holofernes. She seduced him and then cut his head off. It's great. Um, it's been a subject of uh, a lot of paintings. Um, Caravaggio yeah. did, did a, a, a dramatic one. Of course, everything Caravaggio did was dramatic. Um, 
the mother of Constantine the Great, uh, St. Helena, who, according to legend, found the true cross, um, and other in the in the Christian realm, they're saints, women who are saints. Right. And that's often sacrifice. Um, so um, there are a bunch of other lists of different ones, uh, different uh, female worthies over over years. Um, and uh, also um, statues of those um, and artwork of those um, over the years. Um, but it oh. is interesting. They seem to be mostly about sacrifice. Right. Or, or using uniquely feminine uh, means to achieve an end. Right. And I guess that that's sensible from the perspective of uh, well, it looks like a 15th century actually. Yes. Manuscript here. So, um, but speaking of artwork, I wanted to go back to the the mural I I showed was by oh I had the artist written down here Giacomo Giacario. It's a great name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the statues on the the Nun Gut Helden, the nine good heroes that you your the statuary that you showed, mm -hmm. and in in Italy, the nine worthies are known as I Nove Prodi. I, N O V E P R O D I. So I don't, you'd be better at the translation of that than I am, but uh, I thought you would be interested to know that there is a specific Italian. Yeah, uh, thank you. I have to, I will have to, um, um, I'm trying to think what that. Um, Nove, I would have thought was new. Yeah, I would think um i I'll, I'll have to look that up because um novi is new e is the the essentially when you're talking about a plural but what is the i at the beginning yeah that's what that is essentially the uh, new okay. something but maybe but um, the Italian of that period could be different. Um, oh, well, that's true. Not this, what I says in Italy, they are I novi prodi is what I've got from my little bit of copied research here. They're, they're, the French refer to them as le neuf pru, the nine prow, yeah. Nine, yeah. or nine or the nine valiants. I see them all with bowl cuts and. <laughs> <laughs> Real princes, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. And they are, in fact, that's you say that, but they are, in fact, often referred to as princes. Yes. Uh, when when being discussed in in uh, William Caxton's book of the uh, in his to his edition of Mallory's Le Mort d'Arthur, they are referred to as the three Paynim, the three Jews, and the three Christians. Okay. But, uh, so, so I, uh, have we have, th this was a fairly straightforward subject. We've talked about it and we've, we've discussed how the, the importance of this group of, of individuals to the medieval person was, um, what do you, do you want to go into more depth about the women the next time or do we want to talk about modern so i think before we get into modern ones where i think we would i would talk about how we would divide you know respecting the desire for symmetry three pairs of three nine nine is a magic number 
um <laughs> like the it's an auspicious number from well the, yeah from neurological speaking wasn't wasn't that a not schoolhouse rock but the other thing or, or uh sesame street um, three is a magic number three is a magic number but three, three is even more you know yeah. that was a, a thing back then but i would respecting that i would talk about how we would what categories we would use rather than pagan jewish and christian right um, what categories would we use and i would think rather than so offer the first one here we can go back and forth i'd say what about peace as a category the peacemakers the the most worthy peacemakers who are they mm -hmm. as, and as a category and i thought about this uh, briefly as i as i was researching this that uh, from a modern standpoint and and what would we consider where do we start the modern, you know, what's modern? 19th century? Do we go back to the Enlightenment? Which would make some sense. But they're not, we couldn't, maybe there's two sets of worthies. Maybe we are looking at the, the, the um, from the end of the, what we, can, what we would consider the, the Middle Ages to the Renaissance. We, if we looked at the renaissance through the enlightenment right as a, as a period and then from the enlightenment to modern okay as another period okay and pick maybe try and pick nine from each because otherwise it's so broad yeah it is broad i think that's a good way to do it so if peace is one of those kids that i propose what's a category and I, I like that dividing it into those two eras What's a category that you would propose? Uh, well, the three that I came up with were physical, intellectual, and spiritual. And I was thinking peace, thought, and arts. So our thought is intellectual. Yeah. In sense. Uh, peace could be spiritual. In a way, similar. Good. And... I think I think peace. Uh, I I respect the idea of peacemakers as a category, in particular. Uh, in fact, I, I would I might find that more important than spiritual. Okay. Because you can be spiritual without, I mean, you can be spiritual without creating peace, without actually, right. Without without bringing peace to reality, right. Which to me is more worthy. Than simply thinking about the spiritual aspects of peace and and yeah, what thought. you do rather than yeah, you who does it. more is the most worthy, right? So yeah, you so, can actually bring about peace. <laughs> okay, so P, I I like the symmetry of spiritual, um, intellectual, and physical physical, but if we say peace and thought or intellect and then you your was physical and i was thinking arts and i and i i get that and i see them both as both as equally valid in the if if we're talking about i'm thinking of guys like uh um sir edmund hillary as a as a physical worthy yeah. um admiral cook uh and i was thinking of da vinci and michelangelo and i and i could put them in in the intellectual as well well da vinci certainly but yeah. i'd say michelangelo rembrandt um would be in art so but see rembrandt we would we would put the who, who you're talking about are are in the the other the, the previous age not modern okay so in the modern age that's an interesting question it's like who are the art artists and what about music well exactly that was the mind exactly the thought was going through my head right so visual and there's visual arts there's music there's dance there's theater 
there's arts is a, a huge category. We could do nine worthies just in the arts, just in the arts, and dividing it by uh, visual arts, musical arts, and performance based arts. Wow, like, that's a lot more research than I expected to have to do <laughs> before next week. <laughs> but I think that I think that coming up with our own lists of who the worthies of the Renaissance and the modern era are would be really useful. And I don't think we necessarily have to limit it to three categories. How many categories are there in the um, Nobel? How many Nobel categories are there? How I don't many know. Pulitzer categories are there? So well, we we're only we were only using the nine to to mirror the the worthies here. I I submit we go to twelve. We have four categories, three of each. Okay, that way we can get because twelve. I mean, you know, you got your apostles. Twelve is also a significant number. Um, two six packs. Two yeah. six. There, there you go. A, a case of wine. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Um, See. See, and Socrates is with me, I'm sure, on that. Um, so, uh, so let's 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 do that. Let's do twelve instead of nine. Okay. And the twelve worthies of the the Renaissance. Well, ren from let's say let's say the Renaissance through the Enlightenment. So, say fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred. Okay, and then the 12 worthies of the modern era and that would be 18 1800 you know the, the industrial revolution through now okay so yeah 300 years and and 200 years that's that's pretty fair yep i think so that's pretty good and are we going to we going to pick each our own four categories or do you want to decide on four um i think we should i i think this will take some thought to figure out okay to agree on what the categories are um i think well that's i thought going to 12 was my my yes bid at trying to make it easier to decide okay so we agreed on thought or intellect as one right and we agreed i think we could say peace and or spirituality so the the as a well i would i would submit that it's it's spirituality that leads to peace that if you're you're you know because you could say stalin was a peacemaker well I mean, you can kill you kill forty million the people. Grave, you can, right? Huh, what? The peace of the grave. Yeah, right. <laughs> but if if you can reach, well, you know, let's just. Uh, I guess we can leave that open. And if because, like you say, the Dalai Lama is what I would consider a spiritual worthy, but but it hasn't any particular claim to being a peacemaker. And he he's an influencer. <laughs> he's a peace and, influencer. And and Nelson Mandela that you that you mentioned earlier too, a, a, a great peacemaker, but not thought of as particularly spiritual. Although he's a he's a man of the cloth, I guess is he not? No, you're thinking Desmond Tutu. Oh yes, you you're right. You are, you're absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> but I would I still would like to see a physical category for uh, uh, just achievement physical achievement okay so yeah. intellect peace arts and physical yes okay and i also submit that as we are looking for exemplars 
that um like like da vinci for instance that we we have to pick one or the other category for him but i would like to see some aspect of all four of these in every one of our picks Ooh, okay doesn't yeah. have to be huge they don't have to have you know equal weight right um you know i mean we could because you could put uh uh heisenberg as an intellectual but not a peacemaker <laughs> Well, if you can see him as intellectual, you can't tell he's a peacemaker. But if he's a peacemaker, <laughs> you can't tell where he's an intellectual. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, so I'm okay. Certain. What? Unless you're certain. In I'm, not certain. I, I'm not certain about anything anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So now we've got a little project that we can yep. do for next time. And I think that we could take suggestions for who should be on those lists yeah anybody out there put them in comments put them up on our website we'll we will entertain them even if we don't agree with them right or if they don't if they don't appear on our list we'll we'll discuss them that would be fun okay well um all right Hey. So now we've got something to do and something to look for y'all to look forward to uh, next time. So um, I think that's a wrap then. Okay, good. Yeah. I've still got some whiskey left, so I'll enjoy that after we quit. Absolutely. So until next time, um, please like, thou. subscribe, share. Oh, yeah. Okay. Be thou. A good night. And true.